I was on a horse in the trial. He was a four-year-old, unraced, untrialed. He's quite a nervous horse, probably suffers a little bit of anxiety, which a lot can do at their first trial. And he began a bit slow, which what can happen. Now missing the start, Pacific Legend went straight out the back and the first one to begin was Parisian. So Parisian's about to hit that first turn in front. So I thought when he was back in the field, I would give him a good experience go inside a couple of other horses and teach him. Once I went inside the other horses, he got a little bit scared and he decided to run away from them. And in doing so, my saddle uh, shifted, it slipped, I become unbalanced and, you know, I, I fell off. They were followed by Adana. Oh, one's down. Pacific Legends jockey has come down. It was quite a scary feeling and I got knocked out um, when I hit the ground. Uh, I woke up uh, in an ambulance and discovered that I had uh, problems to my neck and that was my first recollections of uh, my fall. Hi, I'm Blake Shin. I'm a jockey based here at Royal Ramwick in Sydney. I had clean fractures uh, to my C1 and C3 uh, to my, in my neck, which um, I was very lucky, the C1's obviously the closest one to the skull, so thankfully it wasn't worse than uh, it was. I pretty much knew that I had problems in my neck because there was uh, pain when I moved. I could feel that there was a lot of discomfort there, so I could feel that there was some major problems. So when I got the news, um, I was pretty much ready for it. And, you know, the hardest part was just getting in that neck brace and being in that for, you know, a couple of months. That was a really challenging time. My rehabilitation process was a lot of physio work, um, seeing uh, doctors, regular checkups, and it was just a long process of working with the physios, building the strength up through my neck, um, regaining mobility, and that took months and months of recovery and, uh, yeah, to get to where we are now. I didn't know how I was going to get through it. It was a tough time. I had the support from, you know, a lot of people, and I think that the visitors that come and see me in hospital and around my home, they probably got, got me through it because I don't feel I had the strength to get through it uh, myself. Not for one second did I ever think that I was not going to get back on a horse. As, as challenging as it was to get back to riding and how bad the injuries were, I always was going to, to get back riding because I, I love it, it's my passion. I love horses and I'm wrapped to be back doing what I love now. The emotions when I first sat back on a horse, I can, I can re uh, remember the day. It was here at uh, Ramwick and I sat on a horse for Peter and Paul Snowden. When I got on that first horse, it really just felt, felt normal again. And it was, a, it was a big relief. It felt like nothing had changed. I hadn't sat on a horse for five months and it just felt like yesterday, it was great. But the first day back, it meant so much. It was a long journey and long road back to get to that, that first day. It was a big relief um, to even get back to the track, but to win. Dawn Passage coming with a great run. Dawn Passage hits the lead and draws clear from Bivouac and then came Aussie. Good gap back to Zuriana. But Dawn Passage really ripping away on the first and Dawn Passage, Blake Shin back in business. I got shivers down my body. The whole race, it was like it was scripted the whole race. You know, um, I didn't cry, but I felt like I wanted to cry. And I think um, things like that really never happened. It was a fair, fairy tale result and I, I couldn't believe it. The horse just exploded when he got, um, when he got a clear running at the 300 and it was great. I have to thank Gay Wardhouse and Adrian Bite. They, you know, they found that horse for me. They thought it was the right horse for me to come back, back on and you know, I really owe them a lot to giving me that opportunity on my first day back. It was, it was great. That was a very special moment, you know. Um, you know, I think in, in everyone's eyes, and uh, to be able to have that association with him and and really help him get back on top. And you know, after seeing, you know, behind the scenes the the long road that it had been for him to get there, and um, you know what it actually, knowing what it meant to Blake, I think that was sort of um, you know the, the special moment, being that you know he's helped us a lot 
along the way and just to be able to feel like we've been able to, to give something back and, and help him along, uh, obviously a very, very good feeling. How would you describe Blake Shin? I like to think I'm a fiercely competitive person um, out there on the, on the racetrack. I think I'm a very private, private person um, personally. And what, and what makes me tick, I think uh, this just an inner, inner desire to try and be the world's best jockey. Blake's got a tremendous work ethic. Um, he, he's, he's, he's not afraid to, to get in, do the hard yards, uh, roll up his sleeves and, uh, and do the work that's required in order to, to secure the right rides. Uh, very much a team player. Uh, you can see he's very, very driven and, and very focused in his work when he comes in. It does make me want to drive harder to be to be at the Spring Carnival competitive this year. I want to make up for lost time, missing, missing last year. Obviously the Spring Carnival is one of the biggest in, in world racing and having, having missed it last year. I'm looking forward to getting there this year and hopefully having some success like I've had in the past. I just want to keep aiming to win the big races, win, win group ones, try and keep being competitive at, at the top level. I would like to ride around the world, hopefully Hong Kong and get to Europe, maybe America again, and just keep developing and growing it as a person. I think um, you know, if I can keep focusing on all those things, I'll be happy.